Delta Insurance Company. Uh, Mr. Dietrich, please. Just put him over there, Ferris. Make him comfortable. The doctor will be here in a few minutes. Yes? Oh, hello, Dietrich. Sarlson. Yeah, bad news. The bank's just been held up. Well, as near as I can judge at the moment, around 300,000. It's the shipment we had ready for the Federal Reserve Bank. Yes, they got the entire amount. Oh, unfortunately, there's no record of the serial numbers. All right, I'll wait for you. I'm Lieutenant Mayor of the uh, robbery detail. Oh, how are you, Mary? I'm Floyd Sorrelson, the manager. Well, where shall we begin? Well, I just heard the police report from the officer on duty. Four masked men, all well-dressed, one with blonde hair. Three of them made the getaway in the gray sedan. Anything you can add to that? Their voices were muffled under their masks. They were about average height. Mm. That doesn't give us much. Uh, any outstanding characteristics? You notice anything particular about any of them? Well, now you mention it, there was something peculiar about one of them. The one with the light hair. He seemed to be the leader. When he held his gun on me, I noticed that his nails were highly polished. It struck me at the time. Mm, good. Anything else? No, I don't believe so. Uh, can you men add to that? I was on vault detail. It all happened too quickly for me. Well, the blonde hair and the polished nails gives us something. As for the gray sedan, well, if they're smart as they think they are, the first thing they'll do is switch cars. I'll get in touch with you later. Right. All set, Spike? Everything's ready. We'll take a look. Sweet job, Spike. A little bonus. Oh, thanks. Stick this mop in the furnace. On me, it don't look good. Okay. Hop in. Don't forget to get rid of this crate. Don't worry. And good luck. Car 28, calling car 28. Go to Fulton in Delaware. See a woman about a barking dog. That is all. <laughs> now, ain't that something? They're worrying about barking dogs, and we're on our way to San Diego. Thumb me up. OK, this is it. Now, take it easy. I'll do the talking. Anything wrong, officer? See your driver's license. What's the matter with him? He used to work a night shift. Where'd you come from? Richmond. We're heading for Del Monte. Is this the road? This is the road. You mind taking your hats off? Sure. What are you looking for? A blonde. Huh. I've been looking for them for years. Huh? Huh? What's the matter? It's all right, Charlie. The man's looking for a blonde. <laughs> What's her address? You over there. Let's take a look at your hands. OK. So they ain't clean. All right, turn them over. Highly polished nails, eh? Yeah, his toes light up, too. All right, pull over here. There are a couple of questions I want to ask.
Jarvis gang is wiped out. Or at least those responsible for the actual holdup have been eliminated. Well, somebody had to get rid of that gray car, Mr. Dietrich. It didn't walk into the river. Granted, then obviously there was another Confederate. What I can't understand is why the police have failed to unearth one lead in two weeks. Well, I hate to admit it, Mr. Dietrich, but we're smack up against a blind alley. The Delta Insurance Company is concerned with only one thing. Where is the money? $300,000 can't disappear into thin air. That's what Lieutenant Marion's been trying to tell you, Dietrich. He believes the gangsters turned the money over to someone else when they switched cars. Am I right, Lieutenant? We went through that red car with a fine-tooth comb. We pulled out every stitch of upholstery, tore the engine down, and ripped the doors apart. There just isn't any trace. Your own investigators were there. I'm inclined to string along with your theory, Lieutenant. What about possible Confederates? No, we grilled everyone that ever rubbed elbows with Jarvis, including a sweetie, no so. Dietrich, I still think you're making a mistake in not letting the public know the money hasn't been found. And I agree with it. Why don't you offer a reward? That might help. I'm sorry, but we don't feel that way. The more secretive this is kept, the better our chances that whoever has the money will make a slip. Yes? A gentleman to see you. Who? A gentleman who says he has some information on the case. Oh, he has. All right, send him in. This might be interesting. Any objections, gentlemen? I wouldn't care if you brought in Scotland Yard. <laughs> Gentlemen? Oh, so it's you. Dwyer's the name, gentlemen. Tom Dwyer. Uh, look, Dwyer, you wouldn't be interested in this case. No dames involved. You never did look in the right places, Marin. You're Mr. Sorrelson, aren't you? Yes. I believe you said you had something on this case, Mr. Dwyer. I have. Mr. Dietrich of the Delta Insurance Company. For one thing, I know you haven't found the money. How did you find that out? Oh, I've got friends. I've got friends everywhere. I also happen to know that the Jarvis car was sold at police auction to a guy at Ocean City. Mm, smart boy. He knows everything. Sure, that's my business. Now, Mr. Solson, there are just two things that I'm interested in. Women and money. Right now, I happen to be long on women. I'd like to take a crack at this case. I knew he didn't have anything. He's just trying to ace himself in. We have our own investigators. We don't need outside help. Okay, if that's the way you feel about it, don't want to take up your time or mine. Just a minute, Dwyer. Dietrich, Mr. Dwyer impresses me as a go-getter. Besides, he's qualified to go beyond the limits of the police. Personally, I think it's worth a try if Dwyer's willing to gamble. Now, that's the way to talk, Mr. Sorrelson. What's the wing spread, Mr. Chips? Well, young man, the Delta Insurance Company will pay 10% to anyone for all or any part of the money recovered. But remember, you're entirely on your own. 10%? $30,000 and all in one big pot at the end of the rainbow. Now, that's something to start cooking with. Well, you better watch out for that rainbow, Dwyer. May have a hole in the other end of it. Even if I fall in it, I'll come up with the pot. Keep in touch with me, son. I'll be interested in your progress. And you have my best wishes. You better save those for the police. Gentlemen, there are just 30,000 reasons why I'll be seeing you again. Soon. How does the show start? Six o'clock. It's positively the greatest, okay, the most sensational. Okay, sensation. okay, okay, I'll be back. You don't have to sell me. Yeah, good, good. And bring your friends. Hey, Farrar. Eh? Who is that guy? Such me. He just want to know when the show opened. I see. Something's wrong, Mr. McGuire? You know him, maybe? No, I don't know him, maybe. Hey, I'm expecting an associate from back east. He wants to take a look at the car. I'll wait inside. Okay, I'm just going to go catch my dinner. What's the matter? Did you lose it someplace? <laughs> Come on.
Not bad, honey. I always could shoot. I wasn't referring to your shooting. Why, Tom! I didn't think you'd remember me. There are a couple of things about you I couldn't forget. Well, it was very sweet of you to call. I'm glad you think so. Uh, when did you get in town? This morning. Business or pleasure? You name it. Well... Yes, sure, my friend. It's the ride of the century, the thrill of a lifetime. It's the high boy, the fastest ride in California. How many, sir? Sounds cozy. How about it? This is the first Two. time I see you in a whole year, and you want to go on a roller coaster? Can you think of a faster way to make up for lost time? Come on. No, but then, yes, Tom, sir, here God, it is. no, please, Tom. And Tom, I get awfully dizzy when I get on that thing. Don't worry, honey. Nobody will ever know the difference. Come on. Oh, Tom. Please, Tom, can't we go dancing instead? Give him a break, sister. We guarantee the thrill you until you. That's my department, brother. Hop in. Oh, no, please, Tom, not in the back seat. Anywhere you say, sweetheart. Buckle on your safety belt there, Mac. Everybody buckle your safety belts. We don't want no accidents. Take it, please, mister. All right, hold on, folks. Here you go. There they go, folks. Two more carloads of happy people on a daring, a thrilling ride. I think you better take a hat off. We're not getting any place. Give me time, sugar. Give me time. This is going to be a lot of fun. Here we go. Hold on. I don't go away. think they do business. You know, almost anything can happen in here. Well, I'm glad you see things my way. Here's your folks, here it is. The ride of the century. The thrill of a lifetime. It's the high point. The craft. Am I still alive? Pinch me. Haven't you had enough yet? Come on. All right, folks, that's it. Watch your step there. Getting up. Hey, you wake up. Ride's over. Hey, buddy, give me a hand, will you? I don't know why these guys right. take these silly rides if they're going to pull a fade out. Fade out is right, brother. This guy's dead. He's what? He's dead as a mackerel. Gee, he, he must have had a weak ticker. No, he had a weak neck. That's all of them, Lieutenant. All right. You people can go now. But remember, notify the police if you're leaving town. We may need you again for further questioning. Oh, just a minute, Dwyer. You say you're a private dick from Bay City? Mm-hmm. Kind of straining out of your territory, aren't you? Well, I thought this town welcomed tourists. Not in the hunting season. What do you mean by that crack? It was your idea that Spike Edwards, the dead man, was murdered. That's right. Well, I'm not so sure he was, yet. But it so happens he also came from Bay City. He owned a garage there. Well, what do you know? What does that make me, his brother? It's something to think about. Look, I never saw Spike Edwards before in my life. And I'll tell you something else. Nobody saw him get into that roller coaster. What are you talking about? He couldn't get in the car without me seeing him. You remember when me and the pinup girl started for the rear seat? Yeah, I remember that. It was empty, wasn't it? Sure. And we were the last two to get into the car. It left immediately after we got in. And the rear seat was still empty. Gee, that's right. Somebody gave him a free ride. Now, wait a minute. Are you trying to tell me that body dropped into the roller coaster out of a clear sky while you were ripping around those tracks at a mile a minute? Figure it out for yourself, Lieutenant. If he wasn't in the coaster when it started, then someplace along the line, he was dumped in. And people who have been dumped, generally, are people who have been uh, murdered. Isn't he smart? I bet you wouldn't have thought of that. What do you know about this? She doesn't know anything. She's with me. That explains that. Well, Coroner, what do you say? It was murder, all right. 
Strangulation. Well, something very thin, like a piece of picture wire. Now can I have the $64? What made you so sure he was murdered? I've seen guys rubbed out with that technique before. <laughs> you certainly get around, don't you, Dwyer? Sure I do. And I got friends, too. Plenty of them. Let's go. What's your rush? Stick around. I'm just beginning to dislike you. I have an idea. The feeling will be mutual. It's about time we got out of there. Every time I have a date with you, we get involved in a murder. Maybe we should have sat in the back seat. And let a corpse come between us? It wouldn't be the first time. You're always getting mixed up in things. A year ago, it was another murder. I said a year ago, it was another murder. Well, I couldn't help that either. You left me for 10 minutes to solve it. You said, and I haven't seen you since. Well, honey, it took me a little time to solve that one. And that reminds me, I gotta go see somebody about somebody else. Oh, here we go again. But I won't be so long this time. And besides, there's a lot of cash involved in this deal. You and your cash. Don't you like silver foxes? Not when they're on somebody else's leash. I knew you'd understand. Now, let's have a cigarette. Down here and have a well, I wonder what that could be. Miss Sheila Kennedy. Miss Sheila Kennedy. Is so that so? That's the somebody you've got to see about somebody. Well, now, honey, I can explain all oh, that. Oh, don't try to. It might take you another year. Stubborn girl. The one I love belongs to somebody else. He means his tender songs for somebody else. And even when I have my arms around him, I know his thoughts are strong for somebody else. The hands I hold belong to somebody else. I'll bet they're not so cold to somebody else. It's worse to fall in love by yourself. The one I love belongs to somebody said a friend of mine was here. What could have given him that idea? Well, I can dream, can't I? Who are you and what do you want? If you knew, you wouldn't be asking. You said you knew me in Bay City. Oh, you are from Bay City. Say, what is this? A guy from your hometown was murdered here today, sugar. What does that make me, his sister? Quoting a friend of mine, that's something to think about. Look, I don't know anything about it, and I don't like guys who think I do. Well, I prefer love myself. But I happen to do you a favor today. Got this away from the police. What's that got to do with me? The corpse carried it next to his heart. <laughs> Why, these pictures are throwaways. Anybody's liable to have one. Sure, sure. Then a guy by the name of Spike Edwards didn't happen to drop in to see you in the last couple of days, did he? Spike Edwards? I never heard of him. OK. Uh, wait a minute. Why are you so interested in me? You appeal to my finer instincts, beautiful. No, I wouldn't kid you. The name is Dwyer, Tom Dwyer. I'm a private detective. Now, why don't you tell me some things? <laughs> There's nothing to tell. OK, I'm wrong. Now, uh, look, there is something. You know what I think? I think you're in a jam. And maybe I can help you. I don't know why I trust you, but I do. Well, why not? 
All right, so I am in trouble. And anyone who gets mixed up in it, well, for your own sake, stay out of it. You mean the same thing that happened to Spike Edwards might happen to me? Yes. Thanks for the tip. Always mine. My favorite perfume. It's uh, an expensive brand. Oh, I can see that. You think you can afford it? Well, the finer things in life have always appealed to me, sugar. They're harder to get, but they're more fun when you get them. Night. Good night. See, I told you I wouldn't be long. What's the matter? Couldn't you get anywhere with Miss Kennedy? Bonnie, you've got me all wrong. This is business. I'm on a case. Yeah. The case of the girl who said no. Oh, Bonnie, why do you talk like that? Step right in, ladies and gentlemen. Our big show is about to begin. You can't go home without seeing the Museum of Crime. Well, that's something I'd like to see. Do we have to? Can't we just dance? On top of those dogs you've been eating? Come on. It's real. It's shocking. It's historical. Two, two. Two, yes, sir. Thank you. Right inside. See for yourselves why crime doesn't pay. Get out of here. This place gives me the creeps. Are you kidding? Doesn't this car appeal to your scientific mind? Why, look at it. It's streamlined, bulletproof, hard steel. It can do 110 miles an hour without batting a spark plug. It's magnificent. This is a fine way to show me a good time. And I had to wait a year for this? Step into the back seat. Interesting, no? No. No. It cost me a fortune to fix up that old wreck, and the public don't go for it. What do they want for 25 cents? The Battle of Gettysburg? Here I have the most sensational, the most colossal... Yeah, thing. yeah, I heard it all outside. The show's a flop, huh? Hey, boss. I did all right when I had the Invisible Man. What happened to him? He disappeared. Look, I represent a Big Eastern collector. I might want to buy the car. You want to buy it, too? Somebody else interested? I just made a deal yesterday with a man named McGuire. But I'll sell you the hot seat, cheap. No, thanks. He says he came here from an Eastern collector like you. Maybe it's the same one, eh? I don't think so. You must be working for somebody else. It's too bad. Maybe I should get some more cars like this and go into the used car business. You've got an idea. You've got an idea. Good night, Miss Kennedy. Good night. Stage door timer, they call me. Were you expecting someone else? Well, uh, no. I thought maybe you might like to help me polish off a stack of wheat cakes. Oh, I'd like to, but I'm, uh, I'm pretty tired. Uh, however, you can see me to my hotel if you care to. Well, I was getting around to that later. Uh, later. Uh, look, we'll have a better chance of getting a cab this way. Let's go. You know, you gave me something to think about tonight. Let's not talk about it. Well, I was just wondering if anything should happen to me, who'd claim the body? Must you always talk about a body? I've always found it the most interesting place to start a conversation. You happen to know a guy by the name of McGuire? 
No, shall I? It's too bad we can't be alone. What are you talking about? We got company. You mean we're being followed? Ever since we left the place. I wonder who they're after, me or you. Well, can't you do something? Sure, why not? Well, here we are. Still early. You sure you don't want something to eat? Not tonight, but I'll take a rain check on it. You got it. Keep it. Aren't you keeping the car? No, I think I'll take a walk. Well, good night. Good night. See you in the morning. Easy, you'll be all right. Oh, my head. What happened? Somebody must have slugged you. I was passing by out front, and I heard you holler for help. You must have hit me with a sledgehammer. What are you doing around here this late at night? I live in there. Maybe you need a drink. You got one? In the top drawer of my desk, a bottle in there. I'll get it. See who hit you? No, only a shadow over there by the car. I better call the police. What's that? The roller coaster. They test it every night after they close the park. Sounds like it runs right into the building. It does. Well, how interesting. Yeah, nothing but trouble ever since I got that jalopy. Why should anybody want it? Some people collect butterflies. Is that what you do? Oh, me? No, I'm the guy that furnishes the net. Oh, hello, Tom. Hello, Sheila. Have a good night's rest? I always sleep like a baby, don't you? When there's nothing better to do. You know, that's what I like about you. You're always in there punching. If I wasn't a sober man, I could drink this stuff. Like it that much? Yeah. Something else I like, too. A dame that's smarter than me. 
Is that possible? It's too bad you didn't stick with me last night. We might have had a lot of laughs. Oh, I was too tired. But I said I'd take a rain check on it. You didn't by any chance have something more important to do. Well, you hardly know me, and already you're accusing me of two-timing you. Is it too soon? Look, baby, if you're going to be on my team, you're going to play ball my way. Is this what you call the wind-up? Here. That's my handkerchief. I must have dropped it. You sure did, sister. Now you can drop that phony line you've been giving me. You went back to Farrar's apartment last night. What for? I came up here and went right to bed after you left me. What's this all about? That's what you're going to tell me. What do you know about the Jarvis card? I don't know anything about it. I don't want any part of it. You don't know anything about it, but you don't want any part of it. Look, baby, no dame ever lied to me and got away with it. I'm a guy that wrote a chapter on the subject. What are you talking about? Somebody dropped that handkerchief in the museum last night and slugged Farrar. Well, what's that got to do with me? Well, if you weren't there and someone dropped that handkerchief, it looks to me like somebody's trying to frame you. But why? You ought to know that better than me. But you won't spill it. Okay, get somebody else to help you. Please, Tom, believe I me. I wrote a chapter on that subject, too, honey. I'm through with you. Wait a minute, Tom. Look, I can't lie to you. I'll tell you. I was Jarvis's sweetheart. I want the whole works. Well, I've been trying to live it down and get away from that kind of life. After he was killed, I thought, oh, I thought I could escape from all that. Go ahead. But the police wouldn't let me. They hounded me and grilled me until I thought I'd go crazy. Finally, I came out here and got a job at the show. Oh, I thought I was safe. But it followed me. So you came to Ocean City, where the Jarvis car was, to get away from your past. I didn't know it was here. You've got to believe me. What the cops grill you for? They thought I knew where the money was. Did you? Jarvis wouldn't trust his own mother with more than 10 cents. Tom, I told you there was trouble in this. I've seen what happened to people up north who mixed in Jarvis's affairs. It isn't healthy. I want to stay in one piece. You've got to believe me. Hmm. That's one chapter I haven't finished yet. Let's try that again. Will you, darling? I need your help. After that, I can almost believe anything. And I'll tell you something. I knew you didn't go back to the museum last night. I left you at 12.45, and it takes 25 minutes to get to the museum from here. Farrar was slugged before one. Why, you lugged? Why did you pull this on me? Oh, just another way to find out things. But someone did try to frame you. That was a dirty trick, Tom. Well, maybe I can make it up to you. How about picking up that rain check? How can I resist you? Where we go? Oh, the club has a swell cook. Get your coat. good as you look. You should see me when I wake up. That's not a bad idea. Say, I'll play that one about, uh, the one I love, the... You mean belongs to somebody else? Yeah, that's it. Somebody else. He means his tender songs for somebody else. And even when I have. I'm going crazy around here, Wires. Don't call me Wires. Okay, okay. But I think we're both suckers. Why does the boss want us to stall around and buy the car? You want to do lift it like a wallet? Well, I think we ought to do something. Maybe if you and me was to get that dough alone, we'd only have to split it two ways. You know, I can figure out an angle where I'd only have to split it one way. We 
got some unfinished business. Oh, one I love belongs to somebody. Else. Where I sit, that's tops. Then you think I'll go places? You're a cinch. All you need is a guide by the name of Dwyer. Incidentally, I've got places to go, too. I'd better run along. Thank you, Sam. When will I see you again? Tonight. Tonight? Sure. Tonight I'll come back for an encore. Look, Farrar, the party I work for doesn't like too much talk. Sure, I understand, Mr. McGuire. Mm -hmm. Just how much to tell this guy, this Dwyer? Only that I already made a deal with you. That all? Anything else to tell, McGuire? Oh, it's the guy who's interested in used cars. Some used cars. Say, Farrar, take a little walk, will you? I want to talk business with uh, Mr. Dwyer. <laughs> but I got to make up my receipts. I'll be a nice little boy and scram. All right. Now, Mr. Dwyer, just how interested are you in that car? Plenty. Suppose we start even. Why? I represent an Eastern collector, just like you do. It tells me all I need to know. Well, now that that's settled, let's get back to the car. I suppose you heard about the mechanic uh, getting murdered on the coast the other day. Yeah. I wonder if he was interested in that car, too, Wires. What'd you say? You heard me, Wires McGuire. Well, I guess we understand each other. Well, if it isn't my good friend, Lieutenant Blake. Farrar told me I could find you here. Some funny things have been happening in this park lately. Let's say since you blew into town. What do you know, boys? I'm an ill wind. Yeah, you're a bad break for our Chamber of Commerce. Come on, Blake, this is getting us nowhere. What else do you know? I found out the murdered man used to work for Jarvis. Well, that clears up something I didn't know. Thanks for the tip. His being killed in the same roller coaster you were in, and for our being slugged here last night, don't sound so good for you. Oh, quit your bluffing, Blake. You can't pin anything on me. This is no bluff, Dwyer. Maybe I'll run you down yet. You couldn't run anything down but your heels. Now I'll give you a tip. I just happened to remember a guy that had a tricky way of getting rid of his enemies. He used to strangle them to death with a piece of picture wire. The same way Edwards was strangled. Huh. I suppose you're going to tell me your strangler was also in the roller coaster car without a ticket. Wrong again, Watson. My idea is that Edwards could have been murdered any place along the line, even in here. And his body dumped into the roller coaster. Say, uh, through this trap door, which opens right over the tracks in the tunnel. That's an emergency exit from the tunnel. There's a half a dozen of them along the line. Sure, there's even one in the fortune teller's booth. Why don't you get her to help you? This is her busy day. Suppose you tell me the name of your wire killer. The name? Yeah, the name. The name. It's funny. I can't remember it. <laughs> I don't see anything to laugh at. You would if you were standing where I am. <laughs> Who are you? Me? Him? He's a businessman from back east. He uh, collects butterflies. Yeah, that's right. I'm sorry I have any samples with me just now. Maybe you'll catch a few if you hang around with that guy. <laughs> so long, Lieutenant. You're a smart dick, Dwyer. Not all the time, but I think I know who killed Edwards, and I think I know why. Take it easy, boys. Dwyer's a pretty wise guy. Too wise. One peep out of him and he'll need a new neck. <laughs> um, it's quite warm in here, isn't it? Yes, and hot, too. Yeah. Do you have any fans? Fans? Uh -huh. Yes, ma'am. Now, there's a lovely fan. 
Only ten dollars. Imported and hand painted. Oh, I don't want to go that high. Do you have anything cheaper? Cheaper? Mm hmm. Twenty five cents. Twenty five cents. All right, I'll, I'll take it. Young man, I want my 25 cents back. Why, what's the trouble? This fan broke. Well, uh, how did you fan yourself with it? How did I fan myself with it? Just like this. No wonder, lady. Look, with a 25 cent fan, you do it like this. <laughs> Boy, are you corny. Oh, am I? Mm-hmm. Hi, sugar. What are you doing here? Why, you old meanie. Now, what's the matter, Bonnie? Oh, so it's Bonnie. I didn't think you'd recognize me. Well, it's only been a couple of days. Yeah, and you said it'd only be for a couple of minutes. Well, I lost my watch. Oh. Oh, that's different. Now I can forgive you. That's right. You say you're not satisfied. You say you want more for your money. Well, I'll tell you what we're gonna do. What? We're gonna go out and have a good time. You mean you're gonna take me out dancing? Anything you like. Well, come on, boy. Let's go. Just a second. I want to see if there's any messages. All right. Anything for 602, Jack? Oh, yes, Mr. Dwyer. Monica Hotel. There you are. Thanks. Uh, no. Oh. You know, I could eat a lobster first. Sure. Hello, Mr. Dwyer. Hi, Mabel. When this call from Mr. Sorrelson come in? About a half an hour ago. Did he leave a message? Uh, he said he'd call back. There's going to be a contest at the palace. Monica Hotel. Maybe we could win a prize. Why not? If there's enough prizes to go around, we're a cinch. Oh, Mr. Ben. Dwyer, for you, it's Mr. Sorrelson. You can take it right here. Oh, no, not again. Hello? Hello, Sorrelson. When'd you get in town? I arrived yesterday. Came out to the banker's convention. Thought I'd call and find out what progress you've been making. Well, I think I'm on the right track. No, but from now on, things are gonna move pretty fast. Good. Well, keep at it. I hope you come up with that pot of gold. I'm at the Bell Font. If you feel like having a drink this evening, drop over. Well, we'll make it another time. Yeah, lots of luck. Thanks. Now can we go? Fine luck. Now, wait a minute. Don't tell me. Something's come up, and it'll only take me a few minutes, honey. How did you know? Oh, I'm psychiatric. Look, go buy that lobster, and I'll meet you at the palace. But I want to go out dancing with you. I told you I'll meet you there later. And suppose you don't show up? Then you start dancing with yourself. Crazy California drivers. doing here? Oh, darling. I'm so glad you've come. I feel so much better now. Honey, what's the matter? You're all shaken up. Sit down. Tom, someone's trying to kill me. Now, wait a minute. Let me get you a drink. And you can tell me the whole story. I know you're excited, and I want to hear everything. First, I've got to make a very important phone call. Drink that. Hello. Hello, sugar. I want to place a long-distance call. Bay City. Lieutenant Mayron, Bay City Police. Yeah. Call me back. Now, what's it all about? 
I was on my way to the park. Someone tried to run me down. Maybe it was an accident. Accidents don't happen twice. I walked a few more blocks and it happened again. The same car? Yes. The second time it came close enough to knock my bag out of my hand. I was so panicky, I took a cab and came right here. Couldn't you see who was driving? No, oh, it all happened too quickly. Tom, what am I going to do? Are you sure you don't know a mug by the name of McGuire? Wires McGuire? No. I thought maybe you might have heard about him on the south side when you were palsy with Jarvis. I don't think so. The first time I heard of him was when you mentioned his name in the cab the other day. Why? Well, I got a hunch he was trying to frame you with your handkerchief. And if I'm right, he's also trying to knock you off. But why? I don't know this man. Maybe he's trying to get even with Jarvis for something. Jarvis again? I can't now, get rid of... just a minute, honey. Jarvis is doing us a favor. I may finish up my business here tonight. And if I do, I'm in the chips. And you and I are going places together. And Jarvis is paying for the ride. Excuse me. Hello? Yeah. Hello, you big ape. What'd you call me up for, to brag? Pictures? Sure, I think so. But you're off your beat if you believe that money's still in the car. Just a minute. He thinks I'm crazy, but he's never been right yet. Good. Now, take a look at the fenders. Mm, the whole right side is caved in. Yeah, both fenders folded up like accordions. What? No, the left side's okay. Except for the paint that's burned off. That's all I wanted to know. You're a pal, Mirren. Buy yourself a box of cigars. And send them to me. Honey, I'm in, but I've got places to go. You're not leaving me. Now, only $30,000 would tear me away from you at a time like this. But I'm afraid. You've got nothing to worry about. Just make yourself comfortable. Curl up in there if you get tired. I'll park on the sofa with a good book when I come back. Tom, please take me with you. I just don't feel right being alone. Honey, this is a one-man job. Look, I can't help being scared. It's not for myself, but that car, everything connected with it means trouble. Don't worry about me. Look, I want you to do me a favor. Call Farrar at the crime museum. Tell him to meet me at your club at 12.15. Will you do that? Yes, but please be careful. Don't worry about a thing. Mr. Farrar, having a nightcap? Oh, hello. Bet you don't remember me. I'm a friend of a friend of yours, Tom Dwyer. I know. I've been waiting here for him for half an hour. He told me to meet him. If he ever kept a date, it would be a mirage. <laughs> no, you mean a miracle. Nope. A miracle is something you believe, but never see. A mirage is something you see, but brother, don't ever believe it. a long way together. No doubt we will, in opposite directions. Monica Hotel. I'm sorry, Mr. Dwyer's out. He hasn't returned? Uh, no, he hasn't returned. Thank you. McGuire, I was going to call you tonight about the Jarvis car. Oh, finally made up your mind, eh? Not exactly. I think maybe it's worth more money today. Yeah? Well, maybe tomorrow you'll be glad to give it away. <laughs>
Hello, Shug. Give me the Belfont Hotel, Mr. Sorrelson. Yeah, I'll wait. What happened to my call? The line is disconnected. Well, can't you trace the call? It's urgent. I'm sorry, sir. There's no way the call can be traced. All right, all right. Come on, Dwyer, open up. Oh, it's you. Now, look, boys, it's too early in the morning to start scaring children. Wise cracks won't get you out of this, Dwyer. Don't tell me there's been an earthquake in California and I'm the only suspect. We know where you were last night. By an odd coincidence, so do I. You broke into that crime museum. Right. Pinch me for illegal entry and I'll spring myself in a half hour. <laughs> this is one rap you'll never beat. What are you talking about? Murder, pal. Not too plain and not too fancy. Murder? Now, just a minute, fellas. Let's get this straight. Who am I supposed to have bumped off? Your friends Haynes and McGuire. Or should I say, wires, McGuire? Good. Save the state the cost of a trial. The cost of yours will make up for it. I don't want to be too curious, but just when am I supposed to have committed this crime? The bodies was found this morning, but they were killed last night. You've got the wrong boy, Blake. I didn't see those fellas last night, and I got no reason to kill them. I happen to know you had a date with Farrar last night, but didn't show up. Suppose you tell me what detained you. It's funny, I uh, can't seem to remember. Perhaps we can refresh your memory down at headquarters. And you don't have to bother about that tie. The state furnishes a butte, complete with slipknot. You've got a great axe, Blake, but it'll never make the big time. Sheila. Oh, company so early? My friend Blake here doesn't seem to think the climate agrees with me. He's got another room picked out overlooking San Francisco Bay. San Francisco Bay? What are they talking about? Haynes and McGuire were murdered last night. McGuire murdered? Suppose you tell me a little about yourself, young lady. Now leave her out of this, Blake. Miss Kennedy's a friend of mine and she doesn't know anything about it. What have you got to say, Miss Kennedy? Oh, now look, darling, I can't let you do this to protect me. I've... Now, honey. I've got to tell him the truth. He's trying to shield me. I work in one of the nightclubs on the pier. Tom picked me up there a little after one last night and... Now, Sheila, you don't have to do this. Well, after that, <clears throat> I happen to know he didn't see McGuire or anybody else. One o'clock. The coroner said they were killed about three. There, you see? Now, let's forget it and have some breakfast. I hope you can prove it. Well, you have my word for it. Isn't that what they call an alibi? This drawer. <laughs> Look, my gloves. I uh, left them here this morning when I went out. And we stayed up all night playing gin rummy, and I've got a nick in my bankroll to prove it. Isn't it touching? <laughs> Ticklish, you know. So I see. Stick around, Dwyer. There may be another earthquake. Undoubtedly. Come on, Owen. Tom. Thanks for the alibi, sugar. I didn't think a smart gal like you could go for a guy like me. <laughs> Woman doesn't have to be smart to go for a guy like you. No, but it helps. Anybody see you leave last night? No, not that I know of. I uh, know there was no one in the lobby. Tom, you didn't kill them. I don't go in for murder, sugar. I go after it. Well, did you get the money you went after? Yeah, I got it. Well, look, then... Then let's get out of here. As far as a boat or a train or a plane can take us. That's a good idea, but for one thing, the money's gone. Gone? But you said that... That's right, but when I got back last night, somebody slugged me. No money. Well, Tom, what difference does it make? I'm sick of the whole business. Let's get out of here anyway. You're forgetting something. You promised to take me away. I haven't forgotten that. 
Neither have I. But there's something more important to this job than the dough I haven't got. And the dough you'll probably never get. Well, I wouldn't be too sure about that. I got a pretty good idea who's got it. Hello, Sorelson. Come in. Thought you'd get in touch with me this morning, Dwyer. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know anyone else was here. Sheila Kennedy, Floyd Sorelson. How do you do? I know Mr. Sorelson. Aren't you mistaken, Miss Kennedy? Well, don't you remember the High Hill Club? We were introduced by a mutual friend. I'm sorry. I don't believe we've met. Well, it must have been two other people. What's on your mind, Floyd? I'm afraid our business is private. Well, I'll go. Sheila's a pretty good friend of mine. You can talk. I'd rather not intrude. There's uh, something that might interest you, Floyd. Something rather strange about that hold-up money. You mean you've got it? Well, I told you I'd get it. But, uh... What I meant to say was, the police overlooked a very, very important angle. Did they? Mm-hmm. Strictly an inside job. Oh, come now. Everyone knows Jarvis did it. Oh, sure, Jarvis did it. But he had an accomplice in the bank. Aren't you being a little fantastic? Am I? And whoever it was wanted to be absolutely sure that his own hands were clean. You're not a detective. You're a fiction writer. Perhaps you can refresh Mr. Sorelson's memory, Sheila. Wasn't it Jarvis who introduced you? What are you trying to imply? Well, wasn't it? Yes, it was. You know, that guy Jarvis didn't do you any favor. This fella doesn't like you. He tried to frame you the other night by dropping your handkerchief at the museum. And when that didn't work, he tried to run you down with his car. You mean he thought I wanted the money? You're a fool, Dwyer. Before you go, there's just one other little detail. I hate to be gypped. I went into this for $30,000 reward money. 10% of $300,000. You'll get your reward when you turn in the money. Yeah, but it'll only be 15,000. Because only 150,000 was stolen by Jarvis. You kept the other 150,000. That was your deal with him. Too bad Dwyer didn't let you go. I thought you'd lead me to the money, but I didn't think I'd have to kill you. <laughs> Drop that gun, mister. Well, kind of glad we stuck around. I was depending on it. You're a pal, Blake, but please don't ever unload my gun again. Just wanted to keep you out of trouble. Who put the match under his collar? Haynes, McGuire, and Edwards, and they're all dead. Take him down to headquarters. I'll be down later to prefer charges. Come on. You uh, won't need this where you're going, Sarlson. But for now, it looks good with your outfit. Well, that's that. I guess that closes the case, doesn't it? Not exactly. Well, now that you've got Sorelson, there won't be any trouble finding the money. Well, I met Sorelson's type before. He's not the kind of a guy to tip his hand. He'll go to prison for life and spend half of that money trying to get out. Only I'm not gonna give him a chance, because part of that dough belongs to me. I bluffed my way into this case, but I'm going out with a full house. That comes before me? Well, I'm afraid it'll have to for the moment. Well, I guess you don't love me. Well, I wouldn't say that. Let's say that I want to prove it in a practical way. I see. Well, this sounds like goodbye. Let's call it a rain check. How will you know where to find me? You forget I'm a private detective. I'll always remember that. Goodbye, Tom. Hello, beautiful. Why, Tom! I've been waiting for you. I'll take those. But look, I'm going to the station. So am I. I'll drive you. Get in. you decided to come after all. Unpredictable Dwyer, they call me. What made you change your mind? First, uh, let's get comfortable. 
Now, that's better. Well, Sheila, you won't believe me, but I found the money. You found it? Uh-huh. But where? <laughs> You'll get a big kick out of this. The funny thing is, it was right in front of me all the time, and I couldn't see it, which goes to show you how blind a guy can be. Now, you take the murders of Haynes, Edwards, and McGuire, for instance. McGuire killed Edwards because Edwards knew where the money was. But McGuire never did have sense enough to come in out of the rain, so he and Haynes were working for someone else who gave him the orders. They managed to get the money for their boss all right and got paid off with a couple of bullets. Oh, and that looks bad for Sorelson, doesn't it? Well, I wasn't speaking of Sorelson. I called him at his hotel last night and heard him answer the phone. So I know he was in his room. I checked later and no one saw him leave the hotel. So he couldn't have killed Haynes and McGuire. Then if it wasn't Sorelson, who was it? Well, it just narrows down to one person. You. <laughs> I suppose you can prove that. I can. If you'll open that bag. <laughs> Why, of course. I thought you were a smart dame, Sheila. I don't intend to disappoint you. Turn up that canyon. Okay. I hate doing this to my friends, but some people never know when to go home. You know, Sheila, this will kill you. The cops have been listening to our whole conversation. What are you talking about? This car is equipped with a radio transmitter that operates on a police wavelength. So you see, you're not so smart after all. We'll see about that. Get going. You know we're bound to run out of gas. There's enough. <laughs> not enough to get you anywhere, sugar. You're exactly where you were 15 minutes ago, behind the eight ball. Why don't you give up, Sheila? Step on it. Now get out. You mean now? You heard me. I said get out. You're so obstinate. Well. Sheila. You can come out now, Sugarfoot. Brother! The roller coaster has nothing on a ride in a rumble seat. I told you this wasn't a joy ride. You wouldn't believe me. Anytime you're ready, Miss Kennedy. Well, a girl has to look her best when she's going to have her picture taken. Why, certainly I agree. Shall we? You drive that jalopy back to town, sugar, and I'll meet you at the palace. You mean it? Why, certainly. But if I'm not there in an hour... Yeah, yeah, I know. I'll start dancing by myself. That's right. <laughs>